much of time didn't wait for you. It passed you by and dragged us with it. You stayed suspended in a moment, whilst life pushed us forward, whether we liked it or not. Yet a part of you stayed in our veins and pulses through our blood, imprinted on our souls until time ends, in a way no one else knows. Never seen, but always here. The loss of you bigger than one can absorb, thinning our vulnerability, worn weaker with each threatening wave, exposing us to what we cannot control. Because of you, we know the loneliest sorrow, the most piercing fear, the deepest empathy and compassion, and the true meaning of unconditional love. What it is to be purely human, exposed, terrified, bursting with love, present, self-sacrificing, angry, exhausted, and at times fearless warrior with sword drawn, ready to slay. Each day your sister and brother mirror you, reminding us of who you could have been. Their vibrant and loving energy help us to keep breathing and find meaning in life. Today we remember you for the short time we held you and the journey you travelled through us, with us, in the fabric of our being, never forgotten and forever mourned. Contact your funeral director. My what? I was having a baby, not a funeral. A boy, actually, with a prank. We just missed it, really. A day, a decision, a moment. Five weeks pregnant, I imagine. My perfect two-child wife. Feeding baby in the garden while big sister plays. 20 weeks. It's a boy. Imagine that. I always thought I'd have two girls. What will I do with a boy? 33 weeks, Christmas Day, feeling happy and glowy and self-important, about to bring new life forth. 35 weeks, still part on an oversized ultrasound display, the full stop of my pregnancy. A night of labour, and he sleeps quietly into the world without really coming into it at all. Holding him at the intersection of birth and death. Steve and I are sitting with Luca lying between us. His arm falls from the side of his body. We both gasp and then look sheepishly at each other. No, I didn't. Did you? No, of course not. I knew he wasn't really. Then grief, an all-consuming grief, that gets worse, just as everyone thinks it's getting better. A well-meaning parade of people saying hurtful things. I want to tell them he was not too beautiful this world. He was not needed in heaven, and they do not know how I feel because their cat died. With Steve at a deserted beach, I let my pain out in a loud gut of a grotesque moan. He is startled, turns away. Walking along trees, pavement, cars, thinking that since Luca never should have died, I can surely bring him back if only I concentrate hard enough. Envy, anger, debilitating shame, Weighing on me so heavily, so physically, it's hard to put one foot in front of the other. I see an energy healer, even though I probably don't believe in them. Don't tell anyone, not even Steve, especially not Steve. They, you know they, say I need to mother Luca, even though he's not here. A scrapbook, even though I'd scoffed at it as a stupid girly pastime. Blog, even though everyone knows it's a boring load of garbage. And now ten years later, I'm writing poetry. I hate poetry.
The first candle represents grief. The burning down of this candle marks time. It helps us remember that the gaping hole of grief will diminish. It also reminds us that our love, our memories, and a sense of loss remain. We are forever changed as a result of what our babies brought to our lives. The second candle represents love. Without love, there cannot be grief. This candle represents our never-ending love for our babies. The unconditional love of a parent never lessens whether our child is with us or not. This candle acknowledges that love, above all else, sits at the core of our parenthood. The third candle represents memories. Remembering can be hard as it brings back pain, but it also ensures our babies are not forgotten. We remember the joy and anticipation as we prepared for the birth of our babies. We remember the dreams we had of what their lives might be. We remember the times we cried and mourned for their death. All that our babies' lives meant and all that they have given us lives on in our memories. You are alive and well, precious child. In my mind, you are sitting clear as a bell, precious child. In my soul, there is a hole that can never be filled. But in my heart, there is hope as you are living still. The fifth candle represents courage. The agony is great, and yet I will stand it. Had I not got so much, I would not hurt so much. But goodness knows, I would not want to diminish the precious love by one fraction of an ounce. I will hurt. And I will be grateful for that hurt, for it bears witness to the depth of our being, and for that I will be eternally grateful. The sixth candle represents support. Grief can be made worse when other people turn away, as if they are overwhelmed and don't know what to say. There are no words that will make this okay. There is no special magic, just choose to stay. Have My Heart by Karina Fenton and Robin Coucher. You have my heart. On sunshine inside of me days. Tears tumbling down days. Thank you. 
make me stronger. 